Okay, so now we're interested in making our first confidence interval, and specifically we're going to use it to estimate a population mean, and we have two types of problems we'll be doing when it comes to a population mean. First one is when the population standard deviation is known, and then it's a different method when it's not known, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Also realize that this is section 7.2. I don't know why that says 7.3. Okay, anyways. So remember we have to start with a point estimate and we want to estimate a population mean. So we're going to use the point estimate of x bar to estimate our population parameter and the parameter for a mean is mu. Specifically x bar as a point estimate is chosen because it's an unbiased estimator. If you remember what that term means, is that basically x bar, half the time when we get sample averages, they're below the true population mean, but the other half of the time they're above the true population mean. So it's considered an unbiased estimator. And as always the case, remember the larger the sample size in this case, the closer our x bar is to the mu that we're trying to obtain. And when it comes to a population mean, there's actually a lot of different measures of center that we use, but x bar is better than some of those other measures of center, such as median, mode, and mid-range. Okay, so we're ready to start creating our confidence interval. Now, if you remember, we're going to take x bar, which is our sample average, and it probably is not the same as mu, the population mean because of sampling error. So our focus is on creating that interval around it referred to as a confidence interval. And our goal is that somewhere within our confidence interval, mu is actually in there. So remembering that the general formula for a margin of error is the point estimate plus or minus the margin of error, then for us, our margin of error is the maximum error or the difference there is between x bar and the true population mean mu. And again, just to put it in other words, the margin of error is the most we are willing to be off by. So our point estimate we already know to be x bar. Now we need to know what our margin of error is. And this formula right here is the margin of error. Now notice the margin of error is broken into two items being multiplied together. The first is z alpha over 2, our critical value, and the second item that it's multiplied with, sigma over the square root of n, is also sigma sub x bar, the standard deviation for all samples of size n. We had learned about that during um, the central limit theorem of chapter 6. So our point estimate is x bar, and we're going to add and subtract our margin of error, which is this particular formula. And this is kind of a short way of writing it. Generally, we'll look at it as two separate things, or just for clarity's sake, recognizing that the mean is somewhere in between this range of numbers. And also just kind of pointing out that we're taking x bar and subtracting e, the margin of error, and then we're taking x bar and adding e, the margin of error. And one super important thing, if you cannot type this whole thing into your calculator as one long formula, then remember to use a minimum of five digits past the decimal if you are writing out intermediate calculations. If you don't do that, you'll find that your answer is gonna be extremely far from the true answer. And one quick last thing before we start to actually create some of those confidence intervals is if we don't know mean mu for the population that we're trying to estimate, then why would we know what the standard deviation is? The standard deviation comes from the mean. So how are we going to have a standard deviation if we don't have the mean? Well, it turns out sometimes the population standard deviation stays constant over time. So we actually do know what it is, or it's some established value. So for example, like at this school, the average age of a student has shifted over time, but over that same window, the standard deviation has not moved at all. 
So if we were trying to predict the average age of students at the school this year, we definitely want to do some sort of confidence interval to find out what the average is. But the standard deviation that hasn't changed in the last 30 years, let's just go ahead and use that as some sort of given sigma. And don't forget, any time that we're doing a confidence interval, because we're working with the normal table, we're going to need a normal distribution. Although don't forget again, we talked about the central limit theorem, that even if your population is not normally distributed, if n is greater than or equal to 30, if your sample size is large enough, then samples end up having a normal distribution. You could be working with skewed data, but large enough samples of skewed data have normal distributions.